Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we've got a bunch of news. From a story update, Intel's 10th gen CPU draws twice the power, a new Ryzen chip for the DIY market, and AMD grabs more of the GPU market. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I have an update on one of the stories from my last video. In it, I discussed a potential leak that supposedly came from SK Hynix. I originally explained some major issues I had with it, which was part of the reason I wanted to discuss it at the time because it was pretty popular, and I just figured it would be interesting to discuss. Anyway, since then, SK Hynix officially posted an update about the story, and apparently the document was fake. So definitely disregard that story, and of course, keep in mind that while a lot of rumors and leaks end up being true, sometimes they aren't. But I'll always try to show you the original source beyond the 200 articles that are written about something, and I try to make it very clear if something is more of a rumor or fact. And I also sent this out to my followers yesterday, so definitely make sure to follow me on Twitter and everywhere you can so you can get any story updates as soon as I get them. Next up for today, we have a new benchmark on one of Intel's upcoming 10th gen CPUs. The benchmark was found and shared by RO Game, and you can see that it's of the upcoming i7-10700KF, which from what we've seen is an 8-core 16-thread part. What's really interesting here is when we compare the results to AMD's 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 3800X and 3700X. As you can see, they all get very similar scores, with the 10700K edging out over the 3700X and the 3800X beating the 10700K. But really, they're all extremely close. Until you get to the power draw. Intel's 10700K draws double the power of AMD's third-gen Ryzen parts. Of course, one could argue that gamers typically don't care about power draw, and with overclocking, Intel has a chance to take the lead, but we are talking about double the wattage here. Plus, the 10700K had to be pushed all the way to 4.9 GHz, while AMD's Ryzen was just at 4.39 and 4.4. And don't get me wrong, it is seriously impressive that Intel can even match Andy's performance while still on 14 nanometers, regardless of power draw. But I think it's becoming clear that they've got to do something soon. The next story is for those who are looking to build a budget-friendly PC. As many of you know, AMD hasn't really done much recently with the Ryzen 3, not third gen Ryzen, but the lower end Ryzen 3 series of processors. Really, the only Ryzen 3 chips for the DIY market are first gen CPUs or their APU. That is, until now. According to a report by Loyat, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but they're a Malaysian outlet that claims AMD is going to begin selling the Ryzen 3 2300X on March 3rd. For those who aren't aware, the 2300X has been an OEM-only part. Sure, AMD kind of sells it on Amazon, but the price is intentionally ridiculous. Luckily, it's already selling on the Malaysian site Lazada for what's equivalent to around $70 US. Of course, there's a lot more that determines a price besides just a currency transfer, so it could be more or less. With that said, hopefully it's not much more since the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which is essentially a Ben 2600, is just $15 more. The 2300X is a 4-core, four 4-thread four part with a base clock of 3.5 GHz and a boost of 4.0, so the clocks are better, but 2 cores will likely make more of a difference in most applications regardless. Either way, it's nice to see more entry-level parts making their way to the DIY market. Lastly for today, while sticking to AMD news, John Petty Research released Q4 numbers on GPU shipments, and they're really interesting. According to them, going from Q3 to Q4, AMD GPU shipments actually increased by a whopping 22.6%, while Nvidia's decreased by 1.9% and Intel's increased by 0.2%. Basically, AMD had a pretty serious jump in market share, though of course they still trail Nvidia by quite a bit. Ultimately, I think it will depend more on AMD fixing drivers moving forward as I think that's the main thing holding gamers back when looking at an AMD GPU. Of course, with Big Navi coming this year, AMD could gain even more market share. We'll just have to see how well it fares against Nvidia and whether they plan to counter with Ampere or not. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for a chance to pick up Andy's entry-level 2300X, or are you holding out for 10th gen Intel? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.